Hey everybody, it's Jeff from New York and today we are in Las Vegas, fabulous Las Vegas, on the Las Vegas Strip, the northern end of the Las Vegas Strip. We're going to check out Resorts World Hotel and Casino today. This is my first visit to Resorts. Uh, the place opened in June of 2021. I visited in September 2021, three months after it opened. Uh, there was a lot of hype about this place, about how great it was going to be. Then it opened, and it got mixed reviews from vloggers and reviewers around town. So I'm here to see for myself, do I like it? Does it live up to the hype? Or is it just a meh hotel on the Las Vegas Strip? This is going to be an extensive tour of Resorts World. Uh, since it's my first time, I really want to investigate every nook and cranny of this place. Obviously, I'm not staying here this trip, so I'm not going to get into the room or the pool area. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty much going to check out every nook and cranny of this place. By the way, directly across the street is Tacos del Gordo. And uh, I've been trying to get there. I don't know how many trips I've made here saying I'm going to go there and I never managed to get there. But today, uh, right after I left Resorts World, I just walked across the street and got some tacos there. And uh, that's going to come up on an upcoming video. Groundbreaking of Resorts World was initially scheduled for 2014 with the first phase expected to open in 2016. However, the opening date was delayed several times due to redesigns of the project. Groundbreaking took place in May of 2015 and construction actually began in late 2017. Further design changes were made after Wynn Resorts filed a lawsuit against Resorts World, alleging that the Resorts World was way too similar to their nearby Wynn Encore properties right across the street. Wynn had accused Resorts World of misleading its visitors to believing that Resorts World was affiliated with the Wynn properties, which of course it's not. Hey, let's head inside, shall we? So we came in through what I consider the main entrance, and it's obviously very inviting as soon as you walk in. And on the left-hand side, the first thing you see is Zouk Nightclub. Zouk Nightclub is a new innovative space pushing the boundaries of dance music and is poised to become the most technologically advanced nightclub in Las Vegas. Zouk had yet to open uh, by the time I got here to uh, do this walkthrough. However, I believe it was poised to open in about two or three days after my visit. Coming up on the left here is Fuhu Restaurant, which is a high-energy dining venue that tempts with an unexpected twist on contemporary Asian cuisine. By the way, the strips of light that you see throughout the complex change color every few seconds, changing the look of the complex as you walk through it. Now we're passing Red Tail on the left hand side. It's a new style social gaming bar where guests can enjoy premium beer, wine, cocktails, and shared plates while playing a variety of games like beer pong, darts, and billiards. Have I mentioned I'm a world class dart player? I'm sure I have. We'll see lots of cool and unusual art as we walk through the complex. And on the opposite side of this atrium is Mulberry Street Pizzeria. This is Mitzi the Rubber Ducky Showgirl who shows up on all my Vegas videos. As most of you know, there are hidden mascots, or some of you call them Easter eggs, in my videos. Mitzi shows up in all the Vegas ones. Sometimes she's easy to spot, other times she's quite elusive, so keep your eyes open while watching the video. If you spot her, note the time in the comments below, and if you're the first one, you'll get a shout out on an upcoming video. This sphere that we're approaching is uh, very eye-catching and it pretty much is the centerpiece of the area of the hotel that we're in right now. Uh, it flashes advertisements as well as uh, events and things going on with regards to nightlife around here and restaurants and stuff like that. And every half hour it puts on a show which really gathers a crowd around it. You will notice as we dig in deeper in this shopping restaurant area or the atrium of the hotel that there are a lot of shops that haven't opened yet but they are online to open. Many of them have uh, dates in their windows as far as when they're going to open. I'm going to say about 50% were open while I visited with a majority of them opening within the next month.
And coming up here on the left is Wally's Wine and Spirits. It's an institution widely beloved by Angelinos and Hollywood celebrities for decades. Wally's blends a restaurant, wine bar, and specialty gourmet market, creating a one-stop tasting and shopping experience. As I walked by Wally's, I casually glanced at what people had ordered, and a lot of them ordered the charcuterie board. You can get them in a couple different sizes. Charcuterie board being a uh, platter of cheeses and meats and crackers and stuff like that, and they were all, of course, drinking wine with it. It looked really good. Seems to be a specialty here at Wally's. That cocktail bag would be perfect for my camera equipment. What do you think? This is Gatsby's Cocktail Lounge right at the edge of the casino here, and uh, we'll get a better look at it in a couple moments, but it's very purple, kind of cosmopolitan-ish. Viva Las Vegas? No, it's Viva the Restaurant, created in collaboration with Esquire Magazine's Chef of the Year. Viva celebrates Chef Ray Garcia's distinct culinary perspective and fresh take on Latin cooking. The menu highlights the bright and bold flavors synonymous with Mexican food and spotlights regional dishes and seasonal ingredients designed as small plates, appetizers, and shareable entrees. And in case you haven't noticed, flying red birds seem to be the theme here as you walk through this atrium. And if you haven't noticed, well, there's one big red bird that'll point it out to you. Again, lots more of these strip lights changing color as you walk by. Down here we not only have the conference center, but a couple of restaurants that are already opened and others that are poised to open very soon. And coming up here on the right is Brisa. Embracing the traditions of Italy, Brisa features a menu of modern coastal Italian fare with homemade pastas and premier seafood along with crafted cocktails including signature Negronis. And coming up next is Carver Steak, or the soon-to-open Carver Steak. It's a modern interpretation on the classic steakhouse experience headlined by dry-aged American cuts and Japanese-certified Wagyu steaks served in a lively environment. Not too lively right now, but I'm sure it will be very shortly. Carver Steak is set to open December of this year. This is Kusanori, a modern Japanese bistro complete with a sushi bar and teppanyaki grills serving classic and innovative dishes from Japan, including yakitori and teppanyaki creations, plus an extensive collection of sake. I love Volkswagens and decided to pack mine up on the trip here to Las Vegas, and this is pretty much what it looked like when I took it out of the luggage when I got to the hotel room. Uh, really didn't know what to do with it, and that iron at the hotel room didn't help much either. A vodka street vendor. First time I've ever seen one of these. They need at least another 200, 250 more around this town. You can put one in front of my house, too. And we've made ourselves around to the Gatsby bar again. Again, very cosmopolitan-ish. It looks like it's raining purple. Someone should write a song about that. My first hold on tight here at Resorts World. How exciting. And in case you haven't figured it out, when we took the escalator, we took it to the second level of the atrium here. Uh, fewer shops are open here, but more are uh, on schedule to open. And as we make our way to the third level shortly, you'll see even fewer shops are open.
here's a little advertisement, or maybe not so little, for Street Eats, which is the uh, food court here, a world-class food court at Resorts World. Uh, it's got vendors from around the world, and we're going to check it out later in this video. And a view of the atrium that we've been walking around from the second level, and that huge sphere is now a Major League Basketball basketball. And up here we have a few open shops and restaurants, including this O bag, bags from uh, handbags from Italy. And the shop owner is frantically running around the shop trying to figure out which bag is setting the shoplifting alarm off. Looks like she found it. And now it looks like our huge sphere, which I really can't take my eyes off since I've been in here, has turned into a huge emoji. Photo opportunity! This is Elephant's Closet. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. But good luck if you're looking for some of those. And here we have a sneaker store. I am always looking for a comfortable pair of walking shoes. So uh, let's head inside and see what they got to offer. I've really raked up quite a collection of uh, sneakers over the years, especially doing this vlog, and uh, I see a lot of nice things that I like here, but it's really overpriced, and I can get a lot of this stuff back home cheaper. I'm not really brand loyal when it comes to sneakers. I do a lot of walking on these trips, and as you can imagine, my uh, feet, knees, and hips really take a beating, uh, but good shoes pretty much ensure that that beating is taken down to a minimum, and it also saves your back. And the sneakers you just saw were from the Jeff from New York's Adidas collection. And here we have a lingerie shop called Pepper. It's uh, kind of like Victoria's Secret, only not as subtle. And we're heading into a big open area here. I'm not sure what the plans are here at Resorts World for this area. I'm not sure if it's more of a convention area or more retail shops or restaurants or clubs. I guess we'll find out eventually. Lots of open space up here. And here are some of the uh, acts that Resorts World has procured, including Celine Dion, Carrie Underwood, Katy Perry, and Luke Bryan. And it looks like that Carver Steaks is going to be a two-story restaurant because there's a second floor entrance here that has yet to open. Every time I see an open space like this, I think to myself, can you play roller hockey here? And in this case, yes, you can. Years ago, I was in a roller hockey league. I played guard. I broke a few ribs. I stopped playing roller hockey. Good news, I have all my original teeth. 
Hello? 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 This convention center is huge and lots of ballrooms as well. You guys remember that old ACDC song? I bet your Resorts World has really big balls. And I bet you their balls are really fancy. Most likely here, some balls are held for charity and uh, some for fancy dress. But when they're held for pleasure, well, those are the balls I like best. Sophomoric humor. Let's hope it stays in Vegas. And now we're going to head up to the nosebleed section of this atrium. Hold on tight. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that thumbs up. It really does help the channel out. Stay tuned, there's a lot more to this video, including not only the casino, but that international food court that we uh, touched upon earlier in the video, as well as Liberace's fur coat and limousine. His limousine was the biggest Rolls Royce ever built and covered entirely in mirrors. And now we're heading into that famous food street eats or the food court here at Resorts World, but you're not gonna find a Wendy's or McDonald's or Johnny Rockets here. First up, Ten Sons Braised Beef, a legendary family-run Thai beef noodle shop located in Bangkok Old Time that received a Bib Gourmand recognition from the Michelin Guide in 2019, 2020, in 2021. Here we have Kori Kori Pa Yakatori, created by Grammy nominated DJ and producer Steve Aoki and his restaurateur brother Kevin Aoki. This Japanese and anime inspired concept features a variety of yakitori, kushiyaki, and yakiyagiori, along with a selection of signature drinks and mochi. That was a mouthful, and I'm sure I butchered it, but trust me, nothing tastes yucky. These kiosks are all over this area and the uh, apps here you can pretty much choose the restaurant you want, what you want to order, you can pay for it here, whatever you want to do, you don't need a phone, it's all here waiting for you. This is Geylang Clay Pot Rice, founded over 40 years ago in one of Singapore's favorite clay pot eateries. Geylang Clay Pot Rice earned a Michelin plate in 2016 and serves up traditional Southeast Asian rice dishes, slowly cooked in traditional clay pots with a variety of savory ingredients. Here we have Nori Bar. Nori Bar offers an authentic sushi experience, including signature made to order hand rolls and sashimi using high quality ingredients, warm seasoned rice, chilled seafood, and crisp nori, along with a menu of eclectic sakis, matcha green tea, seasonal teas, and Japanese beer all on tap. And as you can see, there's big screen TVs here to watch the game, or you can go outside for some al fresco dining. It's 110 degrees outside. I'll keep my sushi inside, thank you. And in the middle of it all, we have like a dessert bar as well as a cocktail bar. Everything served in this food court is obviously a la carte and pretty inexpensive considering your other options in this area. And I know you guys wonder when I actually film these videos because sometimes it's dead and sometimes it's very busy. I'm here on a weekday. It's most likely a Wednesday or a Thursday afternoon, sometime around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm not going to eat here at this food court. Again, I want to go across the street and cross that Taco El Gordo uh, taco stand off my uh, list. So that's a video coming up here shortly. 
Here we have Street Bird Las Vegas. Street Bird Las Vegas is James Beard Award winning chef Marcus Samuelson's love letter to one of America's favorite food, fried chicken. Here we have Blood Brothers Barbecue, a critically acclaimed Houston hotspot that will serve up a classic Texas barbecue with an occasional Chinese and Vietnamese twist. And here we have Pepita's Kitchen by Lichon Diva, a uh, proud product of the Philippines, very much visited by celebrities including Martha Stewart, Adam Richman, as well as the late Anthony Bourdain. And sadly, yes, this little piggy went to market. We saw the Fuhu restaurant earlier in this video. This is Fuhu Shack, which is a casual outpost to that restaurant. They serve up a Western interpretation of one of China's most desired dishes, Peking Duck Burrito. And in the middle of all this is kind of like a international marketplace snack shop here at Resorts World. And here's another look at that cocktail lounge here at Famous Food Street Eats. And as we continue our tour around the famous food street eats here at the Resorts World, we have Ah Chung Sandung Dumpling. And next up, Springleaf Prada Place, a family themed concept from Singapore. Springleaf Prada Place offers authentic cuisine from South India. And here we have Ma's Bar, an Italian food counter from James Beard Award finalist James Trees of Las Vegas favorites Esther's Kitchen, offering fresh mozzarella and burrata, house-made breads, small bites, and signature sandwiches including chicken and eggplant parmesan. And here we have Gugumin Char Kui Tiao. Using traditional charcoal-fired stoves, they ensure that every strand of noodle is expertly fried to produce a smoky aroma called wake or dragon's breath. This is Bantan Ki with recipes originating in Singapore's Chinatown in 1979. This food stall offers traditional chicken rice featuring post-tender chicken paired with rice cooked in a chicken broth. And that's pretty much it for the famous food street eats here at the Resorts World Hotel and Casino. Lots of Asian fare, but if you don't care for Asian, and who doesn't like Asian food, but if you don't care for it, there's good old American fried chicken and some Italian food here as well. This is the Doghouse Saloon and Sports Book with an original location on Nashville's Music Row. Doghouse Saloon is a classic Nashville sports bar situated adjacent to Resorts World, Las Vegas' sports book, and it features live music and dancing, an array of draft beers, creative cocktails, and classic American pub fare with a southern twist. And here's the mouse house in case you're just looking for some snacks and not a full meal. Here we have Liberace and his famous fur coat along with his chauffeur's outfit as well. Uh, these are not authentic uh, Liberace items. They're actually from the movie Liberace, which was on HBO. The car, however, is a Liberace's car. It's the largest Rolls Royce ever made, fully covered in mirrors. Well, almost fully covered.
And here's what looks like a Lego car, but it's not made out of Legos and it's not really a car. What is it? Yep, it's an upright piano. Or is it? It's not really upright. This piano defies description. It's late in the afternoon. I've been exploring the northern end of the Las Vegas Strip all day long. I'm here at the uh, Resorts World and I needed some kind of a caffeine kick at this point. So I stopped off at the Starbucks for one of my favorite nitro brew coffees. This is Marigold, developed by local Las Vegas entrepreneur Billy Richardson. Marigold features American staples such as burgers, lobsters, and house-made desserts, as well as craft brews, signature cocktails, and wine. couple more shops down this end as well as Genting Palace a super cool Asian bar and lounge Donuts anyone? Here we have yet another casino lounge. And here we have the kitchen, morning classics and afternoon delights such as burgers, wok fried noodle dishes as well as a buffet option are served in a tasteful, casual setting overlooking the casino. And here we have Suns Out Buns Out. This playful eatery presents an innovative take on comfort food starring one key ingredient, eggs. No longer just a breakfast staple, Suns Out Buns Out offers egg dishes all day, every day. The restaurant looks cute, but I hate eggs. I won't step foot in this place. By the way, here's another look at Kusanori, the uh, restaurant, the Japanese restaurant that was right behind that Volkswagen sculpture we saw earlier in this video.
sound right, boy. Right, boy. That's pretty much it for the spanking brand new Resorts World here on the north end of the Las Vegas trip. I thought it was a little outdated and worn down, but well, actually just kidding. It's brand new. I kind of enjoyed the place. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, ask some questions, and most importantly, subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. You can visit all of my New York videos by clicking on the top right. Or check out my videos on other favorite places to visit by clicking on the bottom right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around the city.